All right, welcome back to Anton Math. Uh, this video finishes up part five, unit three of our pre-calculus section, and this is just a worked example video. We're going to do a, several examples of graphing some of these trig functions, uh, getting used to the general form of the equations and, and how to derive out the information that we need to make these nice graphs uh, just the way that they need to be. So first example, This example is y equals 2 plus 3 sine of pi minus 2x. Right, so I'm trying to include everything in this one, and I haven't given it to you in just the right form. Right, we need to get this into our general form before we can really do anything here. Now, this is the same as y equals 2 plus 3. Now, the first thing I need to note is, in my general form, I have x in the front, x is positive, and x has a coefficient of 1. That is very important. We need to get it to look like this. So I need to factor out any k. Now, uh, it's also very important to keep in mind that k needs to be a positive number. right? We always want k to be a positive number and the way that we handle that, the way that we can always ensure that k is going to be a positive number is we can use the even and odd properties of sine and cosine. right? And Actually I should probably take a couple of steps back here. Um, we know that from even and odd properties of sine, right? sine is an odd function, so sine of pi minus 2x that's the same thing as, remember, sine of a negative value is going to be negative sine of the positive value. So I can pull out a negative all the way in front of the sign. So I have negative sine 2x minus pi. All right, so now I have x is positive, and all I'm going to need to be able to do is factor out that 2. So that's going to be negative sine of 2 times x minus pi over 2. Right? Another common mistake, sometimes people will factor out this coefficient of x and forget to uh, factor it out of the other term as well. Right? Remember, we have to factor out that 2 from the entire thing. We have these parentheses. So we can document this over here. This y is equal to 2 minus 3 sine of 2 times x minus pi over 2. And there we have it. We're in our general form now, right? We can look at our equations up here in the top left. Everything seems to be in order. We have a very distinct k. It's positive. Uh, we have our a out. We have x is positive and it has a coefficient of 1. We're good to go. Now we can start uh, deriving some of the information. Now, when we graph one period of these um, functions, the question is usually going to ask you for some additional information. It usually won't just say graph the function. It'll it'll ask you for the whole gambit. It'll say find the amplitude, find the period, uh, find one period, or find the interval of one period, um, find all of the shifts, etc. So let's go ahead and do everything that we might see on a question like this. So the first thing is to find the amplitude. Right, the amplitude of this function. As we discussed in the previous videos, this is equal to the absolute value of a. Now looking at my general form here, a is the coefficient of either sine or cosine. Right? This 2 over to the left, this is a vertical shift. This is not my a. My a is going to be right here. So here, the absolute value of a, that's the absolute value of negative 3, or in other words, positive 3. Right? My amplitude will always be positive. Next, we want to find the period. Right, the period of sine or cosine is 2 pi divided by k. Now here my k is a positive 2, so that's going to be 2 pi divided by 2, or in other words, pi. I have a period of 1 pi here. My shifts, let's look at my shifts. I have a shift of, remember in my um, general form here, I have x minus b, so I have a shift of positive pi over 2, right? My b equals positive pi over 2. This negative sign in front of the pi over 2, that's part of the formula. My actual b is just positive pi over 2. So I have a shift 
to the right of pi over 2. And I have another shift, right? I have my, horiz or my uh, vertical shift here, shift in y, of positive 2 as well. So I'm shifting up by 2. And you'll sometimes be asked to document what the interval is of one period. So I'm going to denote that interval by i. And if you remember, our interval after horizontal shifts is going to be b, whatever our horizontal shift is by. to b plus um, 2 pi over k, or b plus my period. So that's going to be 3 pi over 2. Now I've taken off some of the um, some of the numbers on my graph, so we can kind of make this whatever we need it to be. Uh, first thing to notice is that I'm shifting up by 2, and I have an amplitude of 3. So I'm going to cap out at 5. So what I'm going to do is, for this vertical, I'm going to say that each of these lines on my vertical is actually 2. So this will be 2, 4, 6. And this is going to be negative 2 down here. Okay. So we're going to have to use some half values for odd numbers, but this makes sure that we're going to have enough space in our graph for the most extreme point, which is 2 plus 3. Okay. Now, we also need to know, or we also need to make sure I have space in my period. We looks like we have plenty of space. I can go ahead and just call this 2 pi. This is going to be 3 pi over 2. And this is going to be pi over 2 here. OK, so we're going to be starting from here and ending here. Now, I have a shift up of 2. So my would-be kind of horizontal axis of my graph is going to be right here. I have an amplitude of 3. So I'm going to be capping up and bottoming out at 3 above or below this horizontal axis of my graph. But look, I have a negative. Don't forget about the negatives. That's one of the first things we talked about, right? If I have a negative, that means that I'm going to be flipping my graph. So while sine usually goes up and then down, here sine's going to be going down and then coming back up. So let's document some of these points. I know that at pi over 2, that's where I'm starting my period. So that's going to be right here, right, right on this um, horizontal central axis. 3 pi over 2, that's where I end. So I know sine crosses the axis again at 3 pi over 2. And sine crosses the axis in the middle, doesn't it? So we have these three points for sine. Now in between these points is where I cap and bottom out. Now because I'm negative between my first and second point, it, immediately in the middle, that's where I'm bottoming out. So I'm going to be bottoming out at my amplitude below my horizontal axis, or in other words, 3 below my horizontal axis. So that's going to be at this point. Um, I'll go ahead and write it out. 3 pi over 4, negative 1. Right, and we can always check algebraically. Remember, we can plug in 3 pi over 4 here, uh, see what we get, and looks like we would get negative 1. So you can go ahead and confirm that for yourself if you'd like. And over here, I'm going to be reaching my peak, right? So that's going to be 3 above, my amplitude above my horizontal axis. And so that's going to be at 5, about right here. About here. All right, we're ready to go ahead and fill this in. Oh, miss that dot, but I should be crossing that dot. And it looks a little something like that, right? Okay, so it's a little bit, it's a, it's a lot to remember to do, uh, but the more of these problems that you do, uh, the easier it's going to become. All right, now let's do a cosine problem. I've been working with sine a lot. I uh, haven't been doing a whole lot of stuff with cosine. So let's go ahead and look at cosine. Oh, ooh, 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 that's not good. Okay, I've been drawing on the wrong layer. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up and, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. Now, I've brought up a, a, the graph of the basic cosine again. We, I have been working with sine a little bit these last couple examples. So just to remind you what cosine looks like. Now, cosine uh, acts a little bit differently than sine. Remember, sine crosses the horizontal axis at the two endpoints and in the middle. Cosine does the exact opposite. It peaks out at the two endpoints, it bottoms out in the middle, and on the one-fourth and the three-fourths of the way through the graph, that's where it crosses the x-axis. So e exactly the opposite of sine in a certain sense, right? All right, well, let's go ahead and do one of these examples with cosine. Uh, let's say I have uh, y equals, oh. 
y equals cosine of pi over 4 minus x. This is a bit easier than the last example that I did. Uh, the biggest reason I want to do this is to remind you of the even and odd properties again, right? I'm very close to general form here uh, with this uh, equation, but I need to have a positive x, don't I? Now remember, cosine is an even function. That means cosine of negative x equals cosine of positive x. In other words, I can pull out a negative here and it doesn't do anything to cosine. I'm, there's not actually going to be a negative pulled out. So cosine of pi over 4 minus x is the exact same thing of cosine of x minus pi over 4. And if what I just did here uh, doesn't make sense to you, go back to the last unit, watch that video on even and odd functions, and it should be pretty clear what I just did. Right? So even and odd functions, we use that a lot here in the graphing in order to get to our general form. So now that I'm here, cosine of uh, x minus pi over 4, where it's pretty easy to go from here. Um, first, my amplitude is just going to be 1, right? I have no coefficients. My period is just 2 pi, right? My k is equal to 1. I have no k. I have no a. They're both 1. My shift, or in other words, my b, right? My b is pi over 4. So I have a shift to the right by pi over 4. And I have no um, vertical shift, right? I'm not adding or subtracting anything to this uh, function. So we're done. Uh, my interval of one period that we're going to graph out is going to be from b, which is pi over 4, to b plus my period. Uh, so in other words, um, uh, what would that be? 9 pi over 4? Yeah. 8 pi over 4, that's 2 pi, so 2 pi plus pi over 4 is 9 pi over 4. Um, uh, we should be able to fit that in over here. I, I'm just going to go ahead and leave this as 2 pi um, for this problem. So I'm starting from pi over 4, that's right here. I'm going to be ending at 9 pi over 4, just to the right of where my axis ends. Halfway through is going to be at 5 pi over 4, or in other words, right here. And then my quarters, I have 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4 are my two quarters. Right now in cosine, I'm going to be crossing the x-axis here at 3 pi over 4 and at 7 pi over 4, right? And I know that I'm topping out at my two endpoints. So here, my amplitude is 1. So it's going to be 1. This is going to be negative 1 down here. I'm topping out at my left endpoint and my right endpoint. And I'm bottoming out right in the middle of my cosine graph right here. Right? So this graph is going to look a little something like this. All right, so it was a fairly straightforward and easy one. Again, this one was mainly to review the even and odd properties and how we use it in these kind of problems, just like we did with sine, but a little less complicated. Just kind of drill that point. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and set up another problem. We'll be right back. All right, we're back. And in this last example, we're going to do things a little bit backwards. Sometimes you'll get questions that look like this. There will already be a graph drawn. And the question will say, find the equation of the graph. So we're going to use what we've learned about amplitude, period, and all those things to figure out what the equation of this graph is. All right? So first, amplitude. Notice that my horizontal, uh, my central horizontal axis of this graph is the x-axis. Right? So I don't have any uh, vertical shifts going on here. So my amplitude is going to be 2. Right? Amplitude is the total distance from my central uh, horizontal axis of my graph to uh, the peak or the total distance to the bottom out. Right? So I have an amplitude or absolute value of a is equal to 2. And in fact, we can even do a little bit better than that. Right? Looking at this right away, this looks like a sine graph. Right? I'm crossing the axis in three places at the endpoints and in the center, just like sine does. And it's a positive sine graph because I'm going up first. Right? We know that if we go down first, that's a negative sine graph. If we go up first, that's a positive sine graph. So I know that a equals 2. Not just that the absolute value of a equals 2, but a is going to be positive 2 here, isn't it? All right. Now I need to know what kind of k I'm looking at. Now k is what the period is. So I have 2 pi over k. So it's not what the period is, but we can use the period to find k, right? 2 pi over k is equal to my period. Now my period here, I'm starting from pi over 3, and I'm going to 4 pi over 3, aren't I? That's a 
difference of 3 pi over 3, or in other words, pi. So I know that my period is equal to pi. So in other words, multiplying both sides by k, I get that 2 pi is equal to k pi. So then my k is going to be equal to 2, isn't it? All right. And I have, the last thing we need is I have a horizontal shift here, don't I? I'm starting my graph pi over 3 to the right of 0, 0. That means I have a shift to the right of pi over 3, or in other words, my b equals a positive pi over 3. All right, we're ready to go. My y, in this case, y equals, let me go ahead and plug in all these numbers. I have an a equals 2. I know I'm using sine, so we're going to follow this, this top uh, general formula up here. My a equals positive 2, and then I have sine. My k equals positive 2. And then I have times x minus b, and my b we found to be positive pi over 3. All right, so we've kind of uh, backwards engineered this formula now, this equation, for the graph that we saw in the problem. And that, that's a common type of problem that you'll see in your homework as well. All right, that's the last example I have for this video. Uh, in the next section, we're going to be doing similar things that we did in this, in this unit, um, but dealing more with the graphs of tangent, cotangent, secant, and cosecant. Uh, it should be a little bit shorter of a section than this because we've already learned uh, most of what we need to know. We'll see you there.